And I want to move this directly to YouTube right now. And so if you'd like to hear any part of it to review before Thursday, just search for me on YouTube and pick your class. Or if you want to hear me talking to another class, go ahead and pick another one. It doesn't matter to me, but it is on YouTube, totally optional. Okay, I'll see you next time. Patricia? P-A... Yeah, so you're going to go to YouTube and then S... Yeah, on YouTube. And do you know how to print, uh, spell my last name? No. Okay, that's the problem. So you got Patricia right. Yes. S-T... E I N K E K E yes me. Um, since I really wasn't here that day, I'm not really understanding like what exactly it's asking. Okay. So first, you counted um, 125 green mm -hmm. and 29 white. That means albino. Okay. And did you see my albino plants the other day? They're dead now. But they were totally white. Hey! They were white, but they're going to die because they, uh, don't, they can't do photosynthesis. Mm -hmm. So the green ones are still staying alive, but the albinos are going to die. Yeah. So, this is... What the actual data we call observed. Okay. So we're going to add those up. And then we'll use our calculator and do 125 over 154. Let's see what that is for percent. So is this, uh, so this isn't the expected yet or anything? No, not yet. Okay. That's observed. I got 81.2. And let me see, this will be 29 over 154. Eighteen point eight. Okay, you're right. That's observed. Now, how do we get expected? So let's go back up to the problem. We're doing this one. According to Casper test, do your results support the hypothesis that both parents were heterozygous? Oh, so that's when you look at the chart, right? That's, that's when you have to know that cross. Okay. See, this parent's heterozygous. You could use any letter you want, mm -hmm. Ashley. I just used G. Okay. But this parent's heterozygous and this parent's heterozygous. So what would you expect? Uh, that they'd be like 50-50? Nope. And if you don't know, don't guess. Work it. Oh, okay. okay. So here's one parent. Here's the other parent. Green. 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 Oh, so 75 and 25. Yeah, that was a 75... Mm -hmm. 25 How you or three to what? three to one. Mm -hmm. for a sure. Okay. So now we know our expected 75, so 25. Okay. okay. So now we'll do the chi square. And so that's what is there? Observed minus or expected mm -hmm. minus observed. Mm -hmm. like that. You can't mess this up because yeah. once you square it, mm -hmm. then um, the negative sign is going to go away. So you can't if you got this reversed. You can't mess that up. So do you do one at a time, like you do the uh -huh. green? So that's over 75. You do have to get the denominator correct. And then you're going to do the second one. And so it was at 18.8 minus 25. And then just, let's see, 81.2 minus 75. Turned it off. 81.2 minus 75. 6.2, and I don't have a square button, so I just have to do times 6.2 <laughs> again, so I'll have one of those. And divide that by 75. I got 0.5125. And I'll do that one. 18.8 minus 25. 6.2 times 6.2 again. Divide it by 25. Ooh, that's a big one. 1.5376. We're going to add it. I got chi square equals 1.0251. And, we'll, and you don't memorize the table. I'll always give you the table. Okay. Okay. So I only have two categories. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll have two categories, and it tells me take the number of categories and subtract all. Because you have two, yeah. meaning like the green and the white. Those are the two categories. Those are the two categories. So I had two categories. It says take your number of categories, subtract off one. So mm -hmm. I had two, subtract okay. off one. So that means I have one degree of freedom. That's this. So I'm going to take my one and go across looking for my value. Let me put the value in front of you. 0.02. So it would be between these two, right? It would be between these two, which is 0.5 to 0.3. Okay. So would that data support the hypothesis? Yes. Yes. Okay. And the answer was yes. Okay. Okay. All right, and then the other ones would be like that too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very similar. All right, sounds good. Okay. So. Sir? I figured out why we were such on the wrong page over here. I think you were looking at the blue one, I was looking at Oh, the you were ones. looking at the purple one That's with the right. yellow background. I, I see was going it. crazy. <laughs> Aw, and then you were distracted. We were doing no, wait, what am I doing? <laughs> so, I took, so, I took this. So, you got 129, you got a calculator? Yeah. Plus one. The other one's 25? Yeah. Oh, sorry, did it wrong? I, I added the two. Yeah, you got to have that. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. You gotta have the total, or you can't get your percent. You run those two from each other? Yeah. 1.9 divided by 154. Well, it's different. See, just in college, you want a tuition or not? 83. Well, 0.83, so, yeah, 83. Point five three seven six. Uh -huh. Emma, you just look in the book and see whatever's between. Yeah, what's that add up to? Zero five zero one. Zero five zero one. Uh -huh. Okay. So how many degrees of freedom? Uh, so there's two categories. Uh -huh. So one degree. So, of freedom. Yep. so one. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not anything you want to report in a journal. Okay, yeah. So point two to point one. Okay. Is that correct? I don't know. You tell me all these numbers. <laughs> I don't know. Is that correct? So, our, we only have two degrees of freedom because all we're we dealing with. We only have one is, degree of freedom. I mean, one yeah. degree of freedom because we're only dealing with two variables. Okay. Yeah, because I, I totally forgot about this foot of the planet square and then going up. That's how you get your expected. So, what exactly is a phenotype and a genotype? Okay, phenotypes what they look like. And that's all that you really know if you're a geneticist, what it looks like. You can't look at a plant and know it's biggie biggie. Because so like right it looks here. the same as this one. Yeah. Yeah, I can't tell by looking at it. I know this one's two little G's, yeah. but Isn't this one I can't tell. So that's how why we do phenotypes. Because with 100% accuracy, I can tell green from white. And then the genotype is specifically... Yeah, it's more, you you know more information if you know the genotype, but in real life you know the phenotype. phenotype. So, did we need this part? No, but that doesn't mean I won't ask you that on a test. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you.
like sometimes you answer questions that your teacher just wants to make sure you can do it. Okay? That's all right. No. No. Knowledge is power. The reason why we're not living on dirt. Okay? It's true. We're an educated society. We know how to make money and be nice to each other and all get along and behave within the rule of the law and conduct ourselves in an appropriate way. We've Most been of educated. Huh? Most of us. And I think more so in, in, in Houston and in this region of the country than other areas I mean, here that we're blessed to live in a tolerable society. And I don't know if you know how many nationalities are in Houston. We're a very international city and we all seem to coexist okay. I don't know. I feel like Houston does pretty well with everyone here. That's right. We do yeah. all right. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're a very large town. Yeah. A lot of people. So we do pretty well. I mean, there's always a little bit of roughness. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but, you know, we are human. But we do okay. We do okay. All right, guys. So I'll see you next time. If you have any other questions that come up, just email me. Uh, you, you supply the scan tracker. Mm -hmm. And awesome. use the calculator and the pencil. Awesome. awesome. I don't know. I was watching TV yesterday, and uh, the hit on uh, heterochromia with the two different eyes, and I was wondering how that happens. Like, okay. I know it's a mutation. Okay, but also you realize that if you really look at someone's eyes, maybe not yours because yours are pretty dark, okay? <laughs> but, like, if you really look at my eyes, you can see strands of color in there, mm -hmm. okay? And so that, first it means eye color isn't just one gene, it's multiple genes. Multiple genes. And again, we were talking about light switches, polygenic. Yeah, polygenic, yeah. And so we were talking about light switches. So that doesn't mean every cell has all the same genes on. So some cells okay. are producing more pigment and some are producing less. Okay. Now, I can't see it so much in yours because you have a lot of dominant genes. Mm -hmm. But people that have more recessive genes, you can kind of see it more there. Where you can see their light switches are off or their light switches are so on. So that's what it is. It's just mm -hmm. one of the switches is on and off. So mm -hmm. why is it a mutation then? Okay, so it's mutation in that you can see it more in my eyes than yours because having light colored eyes is due to a mutation. Okay. So I'm a more recessive person than you. You can just tell by looking at me. It just means I have more mutations. Now, I didn't mutate. My, somewhere back in my ancestry was the mutation, and I just inherited over generation, generation, generation. And then that's basically how evolution works, right? Like So, okay, so you're more fav look how dark you are. Okay, so you're going to be much more favored than me in areas of the world near the equator. Mm -hmm. Okay? But I'm going to be more favored than you further from the equator because there's not much sun up there mm -hmm. and the sun can penetrate my light-colored skin Easily. more. So I make vitamin D very well, mm -hmm. which needs sun. You don't make vitamin D so well. <laughs> but that's okay because near the equator we have plenty of sun uh -huh. but if you get further away from the equator you're not going to do so well Okay. because your vitamin D production will go down you know vitamin D is how you get calcium yeah yeah okay so you're actually favored near the equator but not favored up towards the poles I'm not favored near the equator but I'm favored more towards the poles of course, now I just hide in buildings, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and you could just take vitamin D pills, Yeah. right? So humans now, we could live anywhere. But there was a reason that you saw the distribution of humans the way it was, and it was, you're right, natural selection. That's right. Generally, we think of mutations as things that are harmful, but they can be helpful if the environment changes. Uh, I remember, like, in eighth grade or something, we were reading, and... Uh, I think uh, it was like an example of uh, some kind of animal, mm -hmm. and it, uh, I might be getting this wrong, but I think it was a mutation where it was in a cold climate, mm -hmm. and uh, its, its skin changed to white. Oh, okay. So the population changed. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't, but it's, it, the population changed and it inherited the ability yeah. to do that. Yeah. Okay, so let's just take obese people. That's okay. a lot of obese people. So, if there was some kind of a, apocalypse and you couldn't get food, then an obese person would actually have an advantage. Because, because their cells would start eating themselves. They would start eating all the yeah. food storage that they have in their body. Or if this obese, if let's say I was on an airplane going to Alaska and we crashed, 
Okay, obese people would last longer than non-obese people because of all the fat that it stores food storage, yeah. and insulation. Yeah. So things you might think is, and, I, and don't get me wrong, I'm telling you to be obese. <laughs> and I'm not telling you that. But things that are sometimes negative can become something positive in a different environment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's interesting. It is very interesting. It gives you different perspectives. But please don't be obese. <laughs> all right. You. I'll see you, Alish. Bye. Thank you.